Well, the arrest of pregnant Zoe Lee Bueller went viral yesterday for all the wrong reasons. Now, the 28-year-old mother was arrested in her Ballarat home for inciting, that's what they've charged her with, after posting on Facebook about a peaceful protest to talk about, debate, discuss Victoria's heavy lockdown laws, particularly in regional Victoria. President of Victorian Bar Association, Wendy Harris QC, has written to the police minister, Lisa Neville, with concerns after the arrest that appeared disproportionate to the threat she presented. While Liberty Victoria say pressing charges to prevent a peaceful protest was a disturbing development, irrespective of the current state of emergency. Well, it's Feedback Friday, and as is always, I'm keen to hear what you have to say about the big issues of the week, just like this. So on my Facebook page today, I asked, did the police go too far with the arrest of Zoe Lee Bueller? This is what you have had to say. Michelle Phillips believes most definitely there was no need to arrest and handcuff her. She was no risk to the police officers at all. Joe DeLusa thinks absolutely. Hypocrisy between BLM and this young mother is sickening. John Ryan says yes, a warning would have been more than enough if in any, indeed she did anything wrong. Ross Gardner believes there's such a double standard here. It's OK for Melbourne March, but not a quiet one in Little Ballarat. That poor woman deserves an apology and stat. Let's bring in my good friend, Sky News contributor and podcast host, Jay Marwick in Perth. Pretty confronting imagery. Yeah, you tell me what you think, Jane. It's, it's pretty tough, isn't it? I mean, you know, imagine if it was someone on the left putting something on Facebook and they were treated like that. Yeah, look... I agree completely with you, Peter. What has really concerned me, I suppose, is in some sectors, a lack of concern or outrage about this. I listened to Melbourne Talk Radio yesterday morning, The Breakfast Show, and I didn't hear them mention this story once. The fact is, when you watch the video of Zoe, she says... She says, look, um, I'll delete the post. You know, I, I, I didn't know. They're in stage three. They're in Ballarat. They were going to use social distancing. I think it's a terrible indictment on our society. Some news organisations completely ignored this story. In Western Australia, you had to go hunting for it. Social, me social media was alive and well and on this story. I was really dismayed to hear some people saying she got what she deserved. She said she was unaware that, that what she was proposing was breaking the law. But also, it, at that stage, it was just a thought. It was just a proposal. No crime had well, been committed. The the this is the thing. Mm. You know, I've been pretty tough on people protesting in the middle of a, of yeah, a me lockdown. Too. I think there's one rule for everybody. And yeah, uh, if she had protests with a whole bunch of people and done the wrong thing, I'd be pretty tough on her tonight. However, I also believe in the one rule for everyone rule, that there is consistency in the approach here. So we have, you know, over 10,000 and the police said before they marched back in June in Melbourne, well, we're not going <clears> to <throat> bother with any arrests or anything like that. We're not going to bother with fines. Just too hard, yep. too unruly. She posts a thought on social media yeah. and literally yeah. Jack Boots inside the door, she's locked up, you know, handcuffs in her PJs for goodness sake. A pregnant woman in front of her young children. She was compliant. There was no indication that she was going to resist any form of, <laughs> of police directive. She was saying, look, mm. delete the post. I found it extraordinary, but it feels dystopian to me. It feels like we're living in some horrible uh, Orwellian parallel universe when some people say, oh, well, uh, some people said, oh, she played the pregnancy card. She played the victim. She is pregnant. Um, <laughs> I don't think she played the victim at all. I think she really owned her so-called error. And what really stuck in my craw was mm. photographs of police in Ballarat who took a knee at a Black Lives Matter protest. So, so in that very same state a couple of months ago. So which is it? You know, and if she were a woman of colour, would she have been treated like this or would she have been front page news everywhere? No, and I don't think she's playing the victim on the pregnancy. I put it in there because it's a statement of fact. It's a statement of fact. Yeah. So that's why I, I agree. My, my I, I'm with tonight. you. And, yeah, and it's valid because she is pregnant and she was on her way to have an ultrasound. So it is completely relevant. And I don't think they should have stressed a pregnant woman in early stage of pregnancy so quickly. 
No, well, I think, you know, just like they should have let someone mm. with brain cancer go home and, you know, rehabilitate oh. in their own home. Pff, don't get me started on that. I want to go to another Agreed. issue today. This discussion about the Aboriginal flag, we've had it for some time. It was created by an Aboriginal artist. He owns the copyright. He's outsourced it to a number of, for which he gets a handsome fee, uh, to a number mm. of companies. The federal government's reportedly in talks to buy it. The move would make it something that can obviously be used under all the usual Commonwealth flag rules. I went to Facebook to find out what people think and I asked this question, should the government buy the commercial rights to the Aboriginal flag? Well, this is what you've had to say. Peter Gordon said, in my opinion, the Aboriginal flag is the most divisive thing in Australia. We're all Australians now and it doesn't matter when you got here, we should all stand under one flag. David Owen believes no way the owner should gift it if they were a true Indigenous supporter rather than blackmail for their own profit. I don't know that he's doing that, but that's that's uh, my viewer's view. Jenny Huff says, yes, I think so, and somehow have the Indigenous flag incorporated into the national flag. David Stingle thinks absolutely not. The Indigenous culture should be celebrated and respected as part of our history, but we are all one people under one flag. Now, I have to say that last comment, Jane, I have no issue, mm. I agree with that, that person, I have no issue with the flag up there in lights on days of Indigenous significance. There's, it's, an, it's an official flag, but there's only one yeah. national flag, and I don't think that should change. No, I agree with you. There is only one national flag. I also love the Aboriginal flag, and look, I was listening to Warren Mundine today, and I sort of, I, I defer to Indigenous voices on this one a bit. He seems to think it is a good idea. Um, look. I love our national flag. I'm also happy for people to have and uh, admire and celebrate the Aboriginal flag. Uh, if the Commonwealth wants to spend, I don't know, do we even know how much money it's going to be if they want to spend well, that I amount of money and have the rights to it? 25 million, mm. 25 million. Now, this is yeah, a lot of money. money off it for some time, but it's a lot there'll be of more money. money. Mm. I, I guess my concern is the moment that the Commonwealth buys the flag, we will yeah. have the argument that it is now. A national flag, As. well, it's not. There can only be one, yep. I'll say that again. But but there'll be this yep. constant debate then that absolutely every time we have the Australian flag up, the national flag, they will then demand, because the Commonwealth owns the Aboriginal flag, that it should go. So thin edge of the wedge stuff. Yep. Thin edge of the wedge yep. stuff. And I agree with that. I agree with that. And you know, you know because you've been in the meetings and you've seen how, and everyone hates a slippery slope argument, but you make a very good point about the slippery slope. So, yeah, you've convinced me. I'm with you. Hey, now, WA, do you want to be your own country? Oh, here, here. Here's my sign. Here's my <laughs> sign. We don't... <laughs> we do not all feel this way. This is just... Wow, this is uh, very, very difficult. You saw yesterday uh, the Daily Paper run a poll of 837 people, although they didn't publish the question, or like News Poll does, the time frame over which the question was asked. We don't know really who was asked, so we weren't given much data. But it was front page news, of course, emboldening the Premier, saying, you know, he's missed a 91%, 92% of West Australians want that hard border to remain. Well, I don't think 837 people, when we don't know the question, is a, a really relevant sample size, but be that as it may, it certainly emboldened the Premier today. Uh, we saw him go to National Cabinet and say, no way. I mean, he's even saying now. So we've got 7,000 jobs in regional Western Australia, from pruning vines to picking fruit to all of the things that you and I have talked about as I travel around the state. And he's now saying that they'll put together a program to work and wander out yonder. The catchphrase here is wander out yonder holiday in WA. He's now wanting the Commonwealth to tip in for that. So you get job seeker or job keeper or something of that nature, Commonwealth largesse, as well as the salary that the farmer or whatever primary industry is paying you on top of that. I hope Scott Morrison says no to that. I mean, he also you talked ha you about... You haven't got uh, the population to run your state. You haven't got the population that your restaurants and pubs, no. clubs, tourism can survive. So basically what he's doing for, for political populism, shutting the state border but consigning you to a lot of economic hardship, I think it's wrong, Jane. Yeah, I do too. And, uh, OK, I will, I will say that many, many West Australians support mm. the Premier, but I'm a fifth-generation Western Australian and I do not support this hard border. I understand why it was implemented in the first place. I mean, the idea that the border will come up, he said today, when there is no community transmission on the eastern seaboard, well, 
when will that be? Well, good luck but with he that. built the cat today. Yeah, be, be, the, yeah. the East and Seaboard is going to keep bringing people home because people, oh. Australians, want to come home. So I've got to leave it there. Yeah. But I mean, cut Victoria around, but I think you're nuts not to let the other states Agreed. in. You need the money. Agree. And, and it's all, all about country. mining. He built the cat today. It's all about mining. So, you know, let's just call it for what it is. Thank you, Peter. Hey, how much do you love her? Get some more of her. Jane Marwick's show on iTunes. Mwah. See you, Jane.